Hi everybody and welcome. My name is Dale and this is the second video in a series of videos dedicated to helping those interested in theatrical design or technical theater get into college programs or get internships or get jobs. Um, in the first video I talked about the basics of portfolios uh, and today I'm going to talk about tips and tricks, um, some lessons I've learned when making portfolios, and hopefully things that will help you when you are actually putting your portfolio together. Um, these are things that I've learned doing it myself in my many iterations of a portfolio, as well as uh, things that I've seen in the years of looking at portfolios for recruiting purposes. Um, there are some things that work really well and some things that don't work quite as well. So I want to give you as much guidance in what I think those things are as I can. So on that note, uh, here are my tips and tricks for creating a design tech portfolio. The first thing I can recommend is to use that first page of your portfolio to its maximum potential. Um, generally, the first page of a portfolio can feel like wasted space, uh, but it's important to know that this is the first opportunity for you to make a visual impression. Uh, use this space to introduce yourself with a really striking visual image. Um, this could be a photo of a production that you've done, a collage of sketches you've created, or a picture of yourself doing the job you're applying for. Be creative uh, and allow this space to start the process of telling your story. Um, you should also make sure that your name is very large and prominent on this first page. Uh, the bigger the better. And make sure that the font matches whatever you're going to use on your resume. Um, these are two connected items that speak to each other and they should have that kind of relationship. Um, we will be talking about resumes in uh, another video, so uh, keep your eye out for that down the road. The second recommendation I have when putting together your portfolio is know who you are. That sounds really vague. But it just basically means, um, what do you want to do? What kind of production positions do you want to pursue? Do you want to be a designer? Do you want to be a technician? Do you want to work in a scene shop, a costume shop, a lighting shop? Do you want to be a director, a stage manager? You have to make this decision at some point during your process. Um, and what you decide is going to help guide how you structure your portfolio. So, for example, if you want to be a scenic designer, then your portfolio is going to start with your scenic design work. Um, I generally recommend uh, your absolute best work uh, and followed up with supporting scenic designs that you've done. Once you have put in all of the scenic design work that you want to include, then you would put in any assistant scenic design work that you've done that supports the path to being a scenic designer that you're interested in. And then any related technical work like technical direction, scenic carpentry, scenic painting, props work. Um, and then once you've kind of gone through those elements, then you would move into other related theater fields. Um, theatrical lighting or costumes, uh, things that connect to the visual element that ties into your goal of being a scenic designer. It doesn't just have to be scenic design work. It can be other elements that support scenic design, but it should always start with scenic design. Um, if the bulk of your portfolio is classwork, which if you're first starting out, it probably will be, that's totally fine. Um, just make sure that you showcase the classwork or the particular class that you think is most in line with what you want to pursue. Um, so if you've taken a general technical theater class and you did a little bit of everything, but you had the most fun doing props, then your first page of your portfolio is probably going to have that particular class project in it because that is what you are more interested in than maybe the uh, makeup portion of the class, if, if that's 
kind of in part of it, um, or vice versa. If you are more interested in the makeup and, and less interested, you still want to know that you know how to do the thing, but um, it's a supportive element as opposed to a this is what I want to pursue element. Um, if you aren't really sure what you want to do yet, that's okay too. Um, it does make it a little bit more challenging to kind of structure your portfolio, but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be making a portfolio. You absolutely should. Um, <clears throat> so generally you would in your uh, kind of how you phrase yourself, you would call yourself a general technician. And then you would put in projects that maybe you are the most proud of or that were the most challenging first that would show off specific skill sets that you have to whoever's looking at it more so than this is the path I want to pursue. It can be something along the lines of this was a really challenging project and I learned something from it or I was able to use these problem solving skills or it challenged me in this way and then you can move on to other technical elements that that you have done. It doesn't necessarily have to be about um, I like doing this more, but you do have to be careful because whenever you put something first in your portfolio, a lot of times people assume that that's what you want to do. So just be really aware of that as you put things into your portfolio. The next recommendation I have is say who you are. Um, what this means is that you should have your name on every single page or set of pages of your portfolio. Um, whether that is an individual label with your name or if it is a show label with your name, then um, it, it either is fine. You just need to make sure that no matter what, on that visual canvas that is your portfolio, somewhere you have your name listed. And that is somewhere that is not on an existing piece of documentation that you are using in your portfolio. If you have your name on um, a, a cue list and you put that in your portfolio, that does not count <laughs> as listing your name on your portfolio. This really needs to be something that is outside of the elements that you're putting in your portfolio and is consistent throughout the course of your portfolio. So making sure that you uh, never give them an opportunity to forget who you are. The next point is quality over quantity. Um, we've all heard the saying uh, less is more, but in this particular instance, better is more. Uh, better quality images in a larger size, um, better work included, um, better projects, not all of the projects, the best paperwork, not all of the paperwork. Um, that's a kind of the, the scope of this. Um, allow your portfolio to have focus. Um, for a particular production, not every scene needs to have a photo, not every song needs to have a photo, um, not every scenic element needs to have its components put in. You don't have to include every prop or every costume or every big lighting effect moment. Um, find the ones that are the most impactful and let those tell the wider story. Um, use your portfolio to highlight pieces or moments that were particularly complex or that you are really proud of for your own personal reasons. Um, for example, if you are an assistant stage manager for a production that has a lot of props, um, you might include a props tracking uh, sheet as well as pictures of the props table and then a photo of the production that includes a lot of the props on stage. Um, that's a really clear way to show that this was a props heavy show and your work with the props and the props team in order to make that show happen. Um, you could then include the other pieces of paperwork in other shows so that you would have um, a, a rehearsal schedule or uh, a calendar and in other shows that you put into your portfolio. You wouldn't include all of them in the same. Um, in regards to quality, my personal opinion is that your resume 
can be uh, set by the times that you've done things. So starting with the most recent and working towards the least recent, but your portfolio should be about the best work. So even if a show you did five years ago still has the most impact on your career and on your, has the best images, was the most complex show, I would put that at the beginning of my portfolio. It's your best foot forward. Um, you want to show people the absolute best thing that you have. If the only thing they look at is the absolute first page of your portfolio, you wanna make sure that they are hooked with the absolute best work that you've got. And that doesn't matter when it was, it is still the best work. Um, now you will note that that will change over time. A lot of the time, especially in, when you first get started, your most recent work will be the most impactful work, but that doesn't necessarily always have to be the case. So if there was a really complex play or musical or dance production that you worked on a number of years ago and you didn't do anything as complex this year, then don't feel like you have to push that complex show back in your portfolio. You can allow that to remain at the front of your portfolio until something comes along that you feel like is more representative of what you can do. A portfolio is not a scrapbook. I'm gonna say it again for those in the back. A portfolio is not a scrapbook. Uh, this can be really hard for people to understand um, and it sounds really mean. I have nothing against scrapbooks. I think scrapbooks are awesome, but the portfolio is a professional piece of documentation. It is a professional means of communication and should be approached from a professional bent. Uh, scrapbook is not a professional communication tool. Um, it is a personal communication tool. It is a memory tool. Um, you can absolutely make scrapbooks of your shows, but they should not be your portfolio. So how to make your portfolio not a scrapbook. Um, if you choose to back your porf uh, portfolio photos with some kind of paper, use a paper that is a neutral color. That means a white, a gray, a tan, um, not big colorful pieces. And whatever you choose, it should be consistent throughout your portfolio. Don't, um, this is a mistake I made when I first started making a portfolio. I color coded each of my shows with backing paper. Um, you don't have to do that. that. That makes it look scrapbooky that lends towards that. You don't need to do that. You can use the same color across the board and it will look fine, I promise. Um, so that's the first thing I would recommend. Um, stickers and other decorative elements like glitter or uh, ribbon borders, they don't belong in a portfolio. Um, they belong in a scrapbook, they don't belong in a portfolio. Um, you do not have to have um, exclamatory items within your portfolio. You really want the elements that you're putting in there, your photos, your paperwork, your research to speak for itself. Um, you don't need to have uh, little notes that, that have descriptors um, in, in cutesy ways. Uh, we'll talk about labels in a minute. Those are different, uh, but stickers and, and things like that just don't really have a place in a portfolio. Um, the uh, next thing with making a portfolio not a scrapbook is to make sure that everything is clean and aligned and spaced appropriately. Um, generally, when we get into scrapbooking, we think about kind of taking our pictures and putting them at fun, cute, exciting angles. Um, and again, that's great for a scrapbook. With a portfolio, I like to look at things that are, are clean, are lined out properly, um, that aren't uh, askew in any um, quirky way. Uh, it doesn't mean you can't do that. You just have to be really careful when you choose to do that. Um, it doesn't really add anything to my viewing experience when I'm looking at something to try and determine whether or not I, I feel like a design or a technical element was successful in the scope of a show. So um, just be really aware when you're doing that 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 can get a little muddy when you're looking at things. Um, I will say that the big exception to this is 
photo collaging. Um, and I think that photo collaging is a really great way to include research images. Um, I do a lot of that in my own personal research where I kind of create a collage board and I layer photos on top of each other that I used as my research for my design. Um, I also think a really cool way to do it is to take uh, sketches that you've done for a specific design piece. You can kind of overlay them on each other with a photo of the final product in the middle. I think that that's a really cool way to not only connect the sketch and the research to the item, but to kind of back everything. Um, just make sure that it doesn't look too busy. Um, so play with those kinds of things. I think that that is the line on scrapbookiness that you can kind of walk when it comes to uh, putting things into your portfolio. Um, so the question I think it comes down to is when you look at it, you go, does this look like a professional presentation or does it look like um, an art project? And um, we definitely wanna skew more towards professional presentation uh, with like a tiny, tiny hint of art project. All right, let's talk about labels. Um, so I generally like to think about the portfolio and the setting up of the portfolio like uh, I won't be there when somebody looks at it. If I can set my portfolio up so that somebody can look through it and basically have their questions about the parts of my portfolio answered, um, then, then I have pretty much done my job. Um, that doesn't mean that I'm giving big descriptions of what's happening in the photos and what the show is about. Um, you do want them to be able to ask you questions about the project, and so let them be able to ask questions. Um, but it means that when they turn the page, there is a label that tells them uh, what the particular production is or what the class that the project you are presenting is from. Um, that they know where it was presented, that they know what you did with the production. Uh, labels are really vital way of kind of keeping track of where you are in the portfolio and where people are when they're looking at it. Um, so generally, I like to have a label at the beginning of each new show that has the title of the show, that has uh, my uh, my name and what I did, the location of the show. And then I, I always think it's important to list the other people whose work is being represented. Um, at minimum, that would be things like the scenic designer and the costume designer. Um, but it can go as far as, uh, and I'm a lighting designer, so I'm generally that person. So scenic designer, costume designer, lighting designer. Their elements are visually being represented. Um, I also think it's important to list the director, if you are not the director, uh, but you can also list uh, other people that you feel work needs to be represented. Um, painters, props artists, makeup artists. It sort of depends on um, what you're representing in your photos and who you think uh, you want to support within your, your labels. Um, you don't want your label to take up a huge amount of space, so you do kind of have to uh, prioritize who uh, you are going to recognize within your introductory label, um, just things to think about. Um, and then I have a smaller label at the top of um, kind of a, a secondary page. If a project takes up more than one set of pages, I'll have another label at the top that just has my name and the role that I did with that show. So it would say Dale Pickard, lighting designer up at the top. Um, this again allows people to remember who I am and what my role was with the production. Uh, <clears throat> and then when they turn the page, they can have the access to the, um, the next label with the next production and all of those uh, elements that go with that. Um, individual items on the page that I think need to be labeled are things like research images, specific paperwork, um, Production photos, if you have a very small collection of them. I tend to not label production photos. They, they tend to be pretty self-explanatory. Um, but I will create labels that have research or the name of a particular um, piece of paperwork documentation that I'm including. Um, process shots, you can have a label that says process shots with um, in the general location that those are. 
And then if you have included paperwork from anyone that um, you did not create the paperwork, somebody else created it and then you worked off of it, um, you would absolutely want to create a label that has the name of the person that did create it, says created by uh, the, the name of the person. Also, on that note, um, don't ever include anything in your portfolio that was paperwork that was created by other people without asking for their permission to include it. Um, it especially if um, you know that they're going to be looking at your portfolio at any point. Um, so if it's a teacher or a professor or a colleague, um, always make sure that you are getting uh, permission of people. Most people don't have any issues with that as long as you're giving credit, creation credit for those things. Um, but just make sure you are not only asking for permission, but giving credit to the people that created those documents. One of the tips that I would give with labels is um, to use something that already exists. There are so many prefabricated label uh, formats that you can use and that makes your labels consistent across the board. You can get uh, business card sizes, you can get shipping label sizes, um, and then you can print those and have them on um, any kind of paper you want. Uh, even though the label itself is generally meant to be printed on a specific label size, it doesn't mean that you have to use that size. You can just use the word template in order to kind of lay everything out so that it's consistent. You can put it on whatever kind of paper you want. Um, so take advantage of those kinds of resources that are out there. Um, printing labels, shipping labels, um, they come in a variety of different sizes. Uh, return labels are, uh, or like return address stickers are a great size for labels. Um, so I would really recommend using those templates even if you're not gonna print them out on that particular paper. Uh, they also come with really fancy borders on there that you can utilize. So you can add a little bit of design flair to your labels without necessarily having to do all of the work yourself. All right, let's talk about some uh, tips for putting the portfolio together. I'm gonna call this the lightning round. I'm gonna try and go through these a little bit faster. Uh, so the first thing that I would recommend when putting your portfolio together is use uh, one side of the page. Um, so generally when you get a, a portfolio, an artist portfolio in particular, it will have one piece of paper in each of the page protectors. Um, and you will be inclined to use both sides of that piece of paper. Here's where the risk comes in. So as you grow and develop, you are going to want to add new shows in, you're going to want to move things around within your portfolio now that this is more important or less important or it can be removed completely. And if you use both sides of the paper, you can't do that without moving all of it at the same time. So what I recommend is buying an extra set of the pages and putting two pages in each page protector and only putting material on one side. That way you can take a page out, put a new page in, and you're not gonna impact what's on the other side of that piece of paper at all. The number of times that I have taped things to the second side and then have had to remove them or change them and carefully trying to peel tape off. I, the, the nightmares I have about peeling tape and pictures off of backs of pages. Please do not make my mistakes. Please do not make my mistakes. Put two pieces of paper in there. I promise the page protectors can handle it. And uh, don't risk having to um, separate the items themselves. Just pull out the page and move on with your life. Um, the second thing I'll say is choose your paper wisely. Uh, this means that uh, show photos and professional photos get printed on photo paper. There's a reason it is called photo paper. It is meant to be used for photos. It makes your photos look beautiful. It makes everything in them stand out. Photographs are meant to be printed on that kind of paper. Um, when they're printed on standard um, printing paper, white printing paper, the ink doesn't have the reflective quality that you really want. It makes everything look washed out. It doesn't give the kind of life to your photos that you want. So use photo paper. Um, if you and a group of other friends are all making uh, portfolios together, 
chip in and buy a pack of photo paper as a group. You do not have to buy your own photo paper. You can buy it as a collective. You're probably not gonna go through a whole packet just making your portfolio. Um, so share with other people. The more paper, uh, photo paper you get, the cheaper it's going to be uh, respectively. So um, do it as a group. Like you can also make it kind of like a, a fun group project. So that would be uh, kind of the first thing with paper. Uh, the second thing I would say is uh, consider cardstock. Um, I really like printing my paperwork on cardstock. Um, I also like mounting my photos on cardstock, and there are a couple of reasons why. Um, so cardstock has a heavier weight, so it holds up a little bit better, and that may that way when I hold up my portfolio, it's not as flexible and it doesn't risk kind of flopping over. It will help support the page a little bit better within my portfolio, which I really appreciate. Um, I also think that it just has a really nice look to it and it doesn't risk um, getting like rolled corners or anything like that when I'm working with it because it's just a little bit of a, a thicker material. So I would really recommend looking into cardstock um, if, you, if you have that opportunity. Um, if you are just starting out, regular paper is fine, but really consider looking into cardstock uh, as you continue to make a portfolio. Um, next thing, choose your adhesion wisely. So my big recommendation is permanent double-sided tape. Permanent. <laughs> permanent double-sided tape. I made the mistake once of buying non-permanent or semi-permanent double-sided tape. And I opened up my portfolio and all of my images were sitting at the bottom because the uh, stickiness of non-permanent double-sided tape just isn't quite enough to support the weight of um, photos and cardstock. So permanent double-sided tape. Um, Things I don't recommend, I don't recommend white glue. Um, white glue tends to have a um, kind of wet consistency to it. It, ten it tends to make colors in your photos run. It tends to um, cause certain elements to uh, kind of warp and, and, and fold in. I, I just don't like that. Um, rubber cement actually has a weird property where it will, um, the fumes from rubber cement will actually like cause the page protectors of your portfolio to warp. So um, I don't recommend rubber cement um, as an element. I really like it, uh, but it, it does weird things to page protectors. Um, and it doesn't seem to matter how long you leave the item out to dry before you put it in the page protector. I've never had success with rubber cement. Um, glue sticks are fine. You just have to be aware that you need time for the glue stick to dry before you can put it into the uh, page protector. So that's just an added time element that you have to worry about. Um, but uh, the adhesion of a glue stick, I think, is, is much safer than, say, a bottle of white glue. Um, and you can also use um, regular scotch tape uh, looped around itself. I, I just feel like that's making more work for myself when the double-sided tape is already designed to, to do that. Um, I, I don't have to worry about um, kind of the, the loop and how big it is and how, um, how it fits underneath the, the photo. I can just use my double-sided tape. It just makes me happy. That's what I would recommend. But uh, glue stick or regular tape uh, are good options uh, if you can't get double-sided tape for any reason. Um, the next thing is, Think about your orientation of your portfolio. And what that means is how do you want to lay things out? Um, I recommend however you want your, um, the people who are going to look at it to, to view it, everything stays in that orientation. So everything is landscape or everything is portrait. What I always find really frustrating when I'm looking through, especially a binder portfolio, is that people don't reorient their images to fit where they, how they want people to view it. And so I'm kind of at the mercy of whatever the document is. So I just sit there and, and do this the whole time 
and it, it, it gets really tiring. Um, I lose track of where I am in the portfolio. Um, I just want to look through. There's absolutely no reason why you can't resize any document to fit whatever kind of orientation that you want to use for people to look at your portfolio. So um, try a couple of things out, stick with what you think works, and then keep it consistent. Do, do not make people turn your portfolio up, upside down and right side right. And um, it's, it's just adding a lot of work and uh, people are gonna walk away with a less positive taste in their mouth than if it was something that was a little bit more straightforward. Um, the next thing I would say is that you should um, include copies or reproductions of items in your portfolio. You should not have original documents in your portfolio. Uh, your portfolio travels around. It is going to be in the hands of a lot of people. There's a lot of risk inherent with that. If somebody sets it on a table and spills a coffee and gets your portfolio pages all gross, it's really sad. But the idea is that you do not have all of your documents in that one portfolio. You have copies, you have reproductions. Um, no original work, meaning that no unique uncopied item should go into your portfolio. There's just too much risk. Um, it is also absolutely okay to make updates to paperwork before you put them into your portfolio. So if you uh, create a ground plan and then you have to change the placement of a specific scenic element, you can update that ground plan before you put it into your portfolio. Um, you can also include the original version and the updated version to show people how you adapted to circumstances within the course of the production. Um, so it, it's absolutely fine to do that, to put in uh, cleaned up paperwork if you had notes written on things, um, if you have like little coffee rings on uh, your documents, you, do, you don't have to put those documents in. There's absolutely a place for that, but it doesn't have to be uh, in your portfolio. Um, and then the last kind of putting it together trick I'm gonna recommend is um, even numbers of pages per show. So if you start off with your splash page, what that means is that you are going to have your splash page up front and then you are going to have two pages that are one canvas. Um, it's really distracting when you have one show on one side and one show on another side. Let the entire canvas be the show. Um, I generally recommend for a large production, uh, four pages and then um, two pages for smaller productions. You can always use one page for classwork, but just make sure that the labels are really clear when you're um, deciding how you want to arrange those things. And the last little bit of advice that I have is that uh, a clean and organized portfolio is going to be the absolute best thing you can do for your portfolio. Um, what that means is that you're taking the time to be clean and precise with how you orient things within your portfolio, how you space them apart from each other, where they like live on the page in relationship to each other, that you give that time and thought. Um, when you are careful with your portfolio and you are precise and you give it that time and attention, it shows the people that you are presenting it to that you have that skill and that they can expect that kind of time and care and attention in the elements that they're going to give into your care, whether that's in a college environment, an internship, or a job. Um, so just make sure that you are thinking about those things. Um, one of the biggest kind of clean and organized things I can recommend is whenever you cut something, um, use a paper cutter, not scissors. You are never gonna get clean, sharp, crisp edges with scissors. Get a paper cutter. If you don't have access to one, invest in a small scale uh, paper cutter. You don't need something big. Um, I personally like the, the, the guillotine style paper cutters, the ones with the little arm that you kind of like chop down. Um, but I personally own a little uh, press down roller. 
uh, paper cutter. Um, just make sure that the blade is sharp and that you are uh, aligning your elements appropriately. Um, scissors just are never going to give you the, the same kind of definition, no matter how good of a scissor cutter you think you are. Um, so just make sure that you're, you're thinking about those things. Um, also make sure that you don't put anything too close to the edges of the page, especially the center of the page. Um, generally what you're going to do is you are going to put things onto the paper outside of a page protector, and then you are going to put it into a page protector. And then it is going to get kind of folded in to the middle just a little bit. So if you have too many items that are hugging the edge or the border of your paper, um, you're gonna run the risk of some of those things uh, feeling like they are falling off the page. So just um, inset items uh, a little bit, doesn't have to be a lot. Um, anything around like a quarter to a half of an inch is probably more than enough. Um, you just don't want things right on the edge of your paper. It's a kind of a, a, a rough location for those kinds of things, especially when you're putting them in and taking them out of the page protectors. Just give your stuff room to breathe. So those are my tips and tricks for putting together a really top-notch theatrical portfolio. Um, I uh, hope you got a lot out of that. I'm really excited to see what kind of questions you all have about this. Please put them down in the comments. I'm excited to read those. Um, next time, I'm gonna be talking about the process of presenting your portfolio. Um, this sounds really, uh, like, uh, why would I talk about this? Uh, we all kind of know how to present but that has not been my experience when I've been going through this process. Um, so I wanna kind of give some insight into uh, some strategies to make your portfolio presentation um, really, really stellar. So that's what we're gonna talk about next. Um, as always, if you have any questions or thoughts on what you would like to see me make more videos on, please put those in the comments down below. Um, I want to make content that you all want to see as well as things that I want to talk about. So please uh, make sure that you are kind of putting that information down there for me. Um, that's all I have for today. So thank you so much for, for being here, for watching this. Um, I hope you have a great day and we'll see you backstage.